Hey guys, how's it going? Valve Venture Investing here today. Wow, so we just saw Tesla report Q1 2020 earnings here and looking at the stock, wow, it's just soaring after hours. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw all time highs here soon. It's pretty crazy to think that not too long ago here, we were almost where we're at right now and then it tanked and how much we've come up. The stock has just been on a tear. Now, of course, the earnings were good. Um, I'm going to give those to you guys today. I'm going to quickly go through the report. I'm going to try not to make this video as long as typical uh, for one of these Tesla videos. Usually they end up being like 20, 25 minutes. I'm going to try to just focus on what's important today because there's a lot of information in here. Um, so let me know, guys, if you like that better. Uh, so looking at just the top line items and the bottom line items here, of course, $6 billion in revenue. It's kind of crazy to be thinking they're making that in a quarter. The estimate was $5.7 billion, so that was a beat. EPS was a huge beat, $1.24 per share, earnings per share. And the estimate was actually that they would lose $0.53. Cents. And of course, we see cash now at $8.1 billion. Of course, quite a bit of that has to do with their capital raise, but still really nice to see a uh, positive cash balance. So let's take a look right now at the report. Let's get into it. The highlights. So cash, a $1.8 billion increase in our cash and cash equivalents in Q1 to $8.1 billion. Free cash flow was a negative $895 million in Q1, um, of which $981 million outflow was due to inventory growth. Offering income was $283 million, and we saw a gap net income of $16 million. I think that's like three quarters in a row that we've seen that. The gross margin at the Gigafactory Shanghai is approaching the level of the US Model 3 and Model Y gross margins in uh, positive in Q1. In terms of operations, the Model Y deliveries began uh, they significantly, uh, uh, significantly ahead of schedule. Um, and also, again here, they just keep doing this. They increased the Model S range to 391 miles with no increase in battery capacity. And they also reached production of 1,000 solar roofs in a single week. In terms of their summary here, they said Q1 2020 was the first time in our history that we have achieved a positive GAT net, net income in the seasonally weak first quarter. Despite global operational challenges, we were able to achieve the best first quarter uh, results for both production and deliveries. Although impacted by inefficiencies related to the temporary suspension of production and deliveries in many locations, our gross margin remains strong at Gigafactory Shanghai. Further volume growth resulted in a material improvement in margins of locally made Model 3 vehicles. In addition, Model Y contributed profits, which is the first time in our history that a new product has been profitable in its first quarter. That's pretty impressive. Despite the expiration of various government incentives at the end of the last year, Q1 was pacing to be the strongest quarter of deliveries until our operations were interrupted in March. Of course, we all know why that is. As a result, we remain confident in growing global production at capacity as quickly as possible. We are continuing to significantly invest in our product, product roadmap, including improvements in technology, as well as localizing production in Shanghai and Berlin. At the same time, we are digitally managing working capital, reducing non-critical spend, and driving production productivity improvements. We believe we are well positioned to manage near-term uncertainty while achieving our long-term plans. So, I mean, that's you know a lot of positive news right there, specifically about all the uh, you know incentives running out. Um, boy, was I wrong on those! I thought that would have you know if you watch back a year ago when I made a video, maybe a little bit longer now. Uh, I thought that was really going to affect demand, but it really doesn't seem that it has. So continue on here. Here is their financial summary. Um, I like to look at the top line, of course, automated, automotive revenues. So for Q1 2020, it was over $5 billion. Now, quarter over quarter, that was down, right? About 19%. Uh, but year over year, we were up 38%. So, you know, just running your eyes down there, it's, it's, it's crazy to see. Uh, how it's increased uh, year over year. Of course, the regulatory credits, you can see how um, those impact on the second line there as well. Um, my, you know, the most important line that I like to look at, I was kind of wrong on this too, I'll admit when I'm wrong, the automotive gross margin, uh, Q1 2020 was 25.5%, so they're just increasing that gross margin. Um, I still don't know with the Y and the uh, S how that's going to be 
impact going forward, but definitely, wow, really positive news there. And again, total revenues are both $6 billion. Uh, they were up 32% year over year, uh, but down, of course, from last quarter. And of course, looking at the net uh, loss or gain here, it was $16 million. Um, that, of course, is down 85%, but it's not even, a, you know, it's, it's NA year over year because as we can see here, the last three quarters, we've actually had a pause in net income, 143 million, 105 million, and 16 million. Wow, this is very, you know, very good news going forward here. And of course, we have EPS here. We have gap of nine cents and non-gap of $1.24. Looking at their cash usage here, um, operating activities, of course, there's $440 million uh, that was used in that. Uh, capital expenditures are, of course, were quite uh, large as well, and free cash will became quite negative um, but then in the very bottom here we see the cash and cash equivalent over eight billion dollars in cash I kind of like looking that over the year two billion five billion five billion six eight billion great to see those increasing the financial summary this is basically what we went through uh, you know pause the screen if you want to read these I'm not gonna read all of them I talked about the 25.5 uh, percent gross margin um, so this is the highest level they said in 18 months also cash they, they explain here how um, it was a 2.3 capital raise it was actually offset by negative quarterly free cash flow um, so that was how their cash flow position was affected in terms of the operational summary of units we have the model s and model x of course this has been down trending for a while they're not going to be focusing on this anymore uh, it was down 14 percent uh, quarter over quarter actually year over year it was up 9%, that's pretty nice. Model 3 and the Waddle Y that came on, we saw about 87,000, um, slightly actually more than last quarter and year over year, we saw 40% growth. So of course the total production was down slightly quarter over quarter, but year over year we were up 33%. The next line down here is deliveries. Um, you can take a look at that if you want, I won't go through it. I really don't think they have a demand problem right now. so. It's more in terms of the production, how much they can push out. We then have the solar deployed and the solar uh, storage is rather uh, deployed. Uh, store and service locations, mobile service fleet. I'll let you guys look at those if you want. Again, like I've mentioned in my other video, supercharger stations is something I think is vital in terms of a competitive advantage. We're at 1,917, 5% up over last quarter and 29% up year over year. I love to look at this one. Uh, the supercharger stations and supercharger connectors as I believe you know once we have that implemented everywhere it's gonna be such a competitive advantage that other competitors are gonna have a really hard time competing with that the next slide here they have is vehicle capacity I'll let you pause the screen if you want to read this uh, but specifically what I liked about it was under Shanghai um, they said that they believe model 3 will achieve a production rate of four thousand dollars a week or approximately two hundred thousand dollars a year by mid 2020 so that's the huge increase that we've been looking for um, of course things have been delayed a bit uh, but that's something I'd be watching forward going very closely in terms of their core technology this is something that everybody's always interested in um, autopilot and full self-driving they said we enable stop sign and traffic light recognition and braking for our early access program users at the end of Q1 and to the wider public in April 2020 as we have done with previous releases of major new features drivers will be required to confirm their attention in order to continue once enough real-world data is collected the system will ensure more capable and uh, our vehicles will continue driving through intersections without confirmation. I keep waiting for that. I mean, it's gone a little bit slower, I think, than Elon has uh, you know, indicated in the past, but still great news there. Vehicle software, they're actually talking about their dash cam viewer. Uh, as far as I'm aware, this is kind of when you're parked, you can look around your vehicle, so they've upgraded that quite a bit. And that is an amazing feature that I wish all vehicles had. In terms of battery and powertrain, the maximum range of both the Model S and X has been extended further, as I said, even without increasing the size of the battery pack. So consumer, uh, consumers consider long range as one of the most important factors when switching from combustion engine to an EV, and our lead has continued to increase with 391 miles for Model S and 351 miles for the Model X. And of course, they have on the right here, um, the Tesla Model S in the highest range non-EV, showing how they're beating them like crazy. <laughs> um, energy business, of course, I'll let you guys pause this if you want to read it. This hasn't become significant yet. I think this could become huge. Um, 
but I'm not too sure how quickly this is going to come about uh, with all the other things on their plate, but you can pause that and take a look at that slide as well. So in terms of their outlook, um, they're saying it's difficult to predict how quickly vehicle manufacturing and its global supply chain will return to prior levels, of course, uh, due to the wide range of potential outcomes. Near-term guidance of net income and free cash flow would be inaccurate. We will again revisit our 2020 guidance in Q2 update. Nothing new there. That's what all the vehicle, all the companies essentially are doing right now. In terms of volume, we have capacity installed to exceed 500,000 vehicle deliveries this year, despite an announced production interruptions. For our U.S. factories, it will remain uncertain how quickly we and our suppliers will be able to ramp production after resuming operations. We are coordinating closely with each supplier and associated government so again you know not that much um, guidance going forward there but the capacity is there likewise they say the same thing about cash flow um, profit uh, you know they're basically saying the same thing but they're saying that they're you know their margins are going to remain strong and the product um, they're stating that we expect the product the production of both model y in fremont and the model 3 in shanghai will continue to ramp up gradually through q2 we're continuing to build capacity for model y at gigafactory berlin and gigafactory shanghai and remain on track to start deliveries from both locations in 2021 lastly we are shifting um, our first tesla semi deliveries to 2021 so they're pushing the uh tesla semi deliveries of course to me that's no surprise uh, they got enough on their plate like that's been one of my concerns going forward but um it's good to at least get some guidance on that and what would one of these reports be without some photos here they got a photo here of the gigafactory shanghai so they're saying future model y factory that's the future model y factory um again gigafactory shanghai this is the battery module and pack factory and at shanghai here again we got the battery module and pack production line it's really beautiful to look at this actually it's I really love how they include these photos in these reports. Um, then they also have a simplification. They're showing how they're simplifying their their Model Three. So here's their model, their Model Y rather, but here's their Model Three underbody, and they're seeing it's 70 pieces of metal. So it's like you know, it's extremely complex. Uh, but the Model Y underbody is two pieces of metal. So that's the types of things that you need to do if you're going to ramp up production and create economies of scale, right? So. It's good that they're showing that as well. And here's two more photos of the, the, what they're explaining in the pictures above. In terms of quarterly metrics, they always like to give these charts. Vehicle deliveries, even though you know it goes up and down quarter or quarter, still very strong. We're seeing the operating cash flow and the free cash flow chart here and the net income. Look at that, three quarters in a row of positive net income. Then they show the tra trailing 12 months TTM. So this is kind of smooths out the results. So you can see vehicle deliveries in terms of units. You know, this goes in a more smooth linear fashion. We can see them ramping up those units. Uh, again, they give the operating cash flow, free cash flow, and the net income as well. And keep in mind though, guys, this is on a trailing 12 months basis. Lastly here, they actually give their financial statements. So they pretty, you know, they above the what we went through was tidbits of this. It didn't have everything in there. These are quite complex, so I'm not gonna go through every little bit of them. I think the truncated version that they give is sufficient to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Of course, I looked through this as well, but I, you know, there's a lot here. So pause the screen if you want that. That's the income statement. Here's the balance sheet. You can pause that one now. And of course, the statement of cash flow. After this, they also give the you know reconciliation of gap to non-gap. I don't like this, you know, going out of gap thing, so I don't usually cover it, but if that's something that interests you, uh, be aware that that's there as well. So wow, another quarter that just blew out of the water for Tesla. Um, it's just it's just bizarre to me how they're having these results, especially in times like this. Um, of course, like I've said in the past, my view on Tesla has become significantly more bullish. I've made some money on them. I've traded here and there, uh, but getting close to $900 a share again, personally, Although I love the company, it's great what they're doing. I want them to succeed. I mean, it's an amazing company. I don't think it's worth this price, personally. That's just my own opinion. Leave a comment down below if you disagree with me or whatever, uh, if you have any comments uh, on anything that I did here. But still, the results uh, speak for themselves. There's gonna be a conference call here soon. I'll be listening to that. Um, so that will give some other good insight as well but i wanted to get a quick video for you guys let you know what's going on and if you're looking at tesla wondering why it's skyrocketing aftermarket that's why anyway guys don't forget to like subscribe 
really helps the channel. That's gonna be it for today. I'll see you in the next one.